Boys and girls, this is the Undisputed Era. Adam Cole, Kylo Riley, Roderick Strong, and you're listening to Going In Raw, baby. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. And you are going in SmackDown Live! Huh. Hey, this is Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Watson going in the Raw. Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you'll be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson. And available wherever podcasts can be found. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and a little notify bell next to it if you want to make sure you always get your new Going In Raw notifications. We've got a lot going on these days. It is Ooh, Wrestle yes. Kingdom night. Noche de Wrestle Ooh. Kingdom. Uh, this is going to be a blast, man. I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, we're in this for the long haul. Both nights, man. Oh, man. Both nights. We've got a lot of friendos that are going to be joining us. We hope you do, too. Uh, live. If you're watching this when this goes live, the SmackDown recap. It's going live pretty much at the same time we're going live. Watch with our this. Wrestle Kingdom. And then, boom, watch Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, or vice you can watch versa. this. By the time this is over, uh, the main card will be starting. But you got to hit that notify bell and click all to make sure you know when we're going. I mean, we're, we can tell you right now. It's 11 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m., uh, 2 a.m. Eastern. Yes. Um, and then. Uh, For the pre show, main card starts at 7 uh, UK uh, midnight time. Pacific and all equivalent time zones around yeah. the world. Uh, and so that should be a lot of fun. And then tomorrow. Uh, of course, uh, tomorrow morning we're going to have, I mean, once Wrestle Kingdom's done, we're going to have a recap done then. Yeah, then, and then it's sleep time. And a couple hours after that, 10 for the wind's going up. We got a new 10 for the wind tomorrow. There's a lot going on, man. So we got a lot going on. Uh, so real quick, though, before we got started, uh, that next week is going to be basically our official return to our bonus content on Patreon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah we're still kind of uh, on somewhat holiday light schedule. Yeah, yeah. We're sort of catching up stuff. However, we did get some new patrons. I want to give them a shout out before we get started on mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Uh, Grandmaster Too Sweet, Rick Co, Okada Dollar, uh, The Professor, Dr. Bird, The Professor, Nathan Zabata. Completely no so bad. Uh, no, that was good. No, you do. You know, you're the hype guy and I'm like the, you know, the so. name guy. So you can keep on doing that for all these. Uh, Michael Carson. Well, I mean, the professor is a very specific reference. Escalade. Yeah. There. Sorry. Skip to my. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Noah, Donovan Howard, Jack Spencer, Batgirl Zombie, and DJ Booty Dan is back. Thank you all. Thank Welcome you, everyone. all and thank you much so much. Also, Jack Spencer just upped his pledge. Uh, to uh, receive a Friendo Care package. And eligible for Matt Chat. And eligible for Matt Chat. All those Friendo Care packages from October, November are out. So you should be receiving those very soon. Apologies for the delay. However, let's get right into this. Yeah, let us. Uh, so SmackDown featured as the thumbnail shows. You haven't seen the thumbnail, have I have you? not. Look at this thumbnail. It's great. That's not too obvious, is it? A little bit. Not too obvious. It's fine. It's fine. Three acts uh, returned yeah. officially. Of course, uh, John Morrison had a cameo. Yeah. He was nursing the Miz psychologically, apparently. Yeah. And I then, thought that was good. I thought that was good. It didn't have to be. At first, I was like, yeah, that's his return? Is he like open no, the door? No, but it's, it's fitting what... It's I like, liked it. It's fitting Miz's storyline perfectly, though, because everything is just like simmering. Uh, you know, as we saw at the end of his match tonight... It's starting to explode. Yeah, he's coming along. He's coming loose at the seams. Is that going to be his first feud with the with uh, Morrison? Or I'm sorry, Morrison's first feud with the Miz. He's going to be like trying to help him, and Miz explodes on him. Well, I'm, I'm expecting to happen at the Rumble is Miz. He's like, I can't. I got to get my hands on the Fiend. He's here. Mm -hmm. He then of course Daniel Bryan his match, mm. and then I wouldn't be surprised if it's Daniel Bryan Miz at Mania. Mm. Oh, that could be. That'd be good. We never really had a satisfying we conclusion didn't. to their previous feud. So I really do. I wonder though, and. It, and hopefully they just roll with whatever they're given. Daniel Bryan was very confident tonight. Here's okay. in that in that he hasn't been changed. It's he a, said such a front. Good old DB. It's a complete facade. That's gonna fall yep. apart. Yep. And I'm really looking forward to that. So it would be interesting if they took that to Mania. Because I think what's gonna cause that to all fall apart is not so much the Fiend in this case. It's gonna be the Miz uh, via the Fiend, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's be yeah. the Miz. It'd be like is is gonna cost Daniel Bryan. The title win, and uh, Daniel Bryan's going to take that all out on the Miz. Although Daniel Bryan teasing a Mania match against Punk, and Punk, P 
put on his Instagram I story the, uh, the program for uh, for WrestleMania oh, yeah, 14, yeah, yeah, yeah. the initial uh, 14. No, for 2014. 30, yeah. 30, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so all the rumors we had heard apparently true. It's supposed to be Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus on that show. CM yeah. Punk versus Triple H. Yeah, yeah. But then they had Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose for the U.S. title on there. Uh, yeah. It's weird. Know. It'd be fun to do a deep dive on that one Instagram story. That was kind of funny. It was interesting. Um, the good of this particular SmackDown uh, mentioned the Miz, Daniel Bryan stuff. That's all great. I love what they do with the Miz. It's 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 really good character based stuff. Yeah. Um, it, he's got a very direct motivation and through line. You know what he wants, and you get the feeling that he's gonna do any, anything he needs to do to get what he wants. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daniel Bryan, complete facade. Yeah, he's barely holding it together. He said, "Good old DB doesn't barely, change." Barely holding it that together. That was hilarious. Barely that holding was it great. together. Great. Uh, Usos are back. That's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. They look like they're all uh, jazzed and stuff. The bad. Uh, I don't know why you need uh, Dash Wilder losing a a singles match to Chad Gable, uh, especially this particular incarnation of, J- of Chad Gable's not uh, exactly what. Uh, I don't know. It's not. He could be doing better things than this. Isn't that kind? Of, wait, who could? Chad Gable. I mean, he could be on main event. I can't stand this version of Chad Gable. That's so, what I mean. Okay. He could be doing far more interesting so stuff. The person, if he had like good creative, yeah, but he doesn't. No. And he's saddled with a terrible gimmick that yes. should be on main event. And so, to me, that was the he's bad. Saddled in that. with a terrible gimmick that should be in the in like 1994. Yeah, I know. And that was, I, I guess that was sort of the point. Look, I, I get it. There are two matches on SmackDown tonight that featured a singles, comp, a single, a tag team guy in featuring a singles, a singles match. match. Yes, yes. And, uh, and that was kind of goop. Uh, well, got three actually. Cause Kofi was yeah, also but in you match. know he was just WWE champion, so yeah, that's, I, I know. That's fine, I, put yeah. him, I put him above all that too. But look, I think my thing about why I didn't really mind necessarily. The Dash Wilder being in a match is because the story they're telling with the revival is they want respect. They don't want to be, they're basically directly addressing sort of the dirt sheet thing. Vince is burying them, turning them into clowns, and they are openly saying, We're not clowns, we're the best tag team on the planet. Yeah. And so this was the scrappy Shorty G, uh, Dash Wilder giving them, uh, you know, basically getting the fluke loss. Well, I don't know, the fluke loss. No, he tapped out. But he tapped out. But them then, quickly too. Them, t- yeah, them, them turning on the aggression on Chad Gable, yeah, showing I, that we are not a joke. We're not. I understand clowns. that, but at the same time, though, if 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 they're out there to prove that, you know, they're uh, the true representation of classic tag team wrestling, like, hey, let's have a singles match to prove that. No, I know. I don't think it's. I don't think it's. They're not proving. They're not. They're not. Their motivation is to prove that, but they need. They need something to show their aggressive side. I guess my main thing about this is if the idea was, if the dirt sheet said Vince is going to book them like clowns, tonight was not that. Tonight was let's pick on a guy who's shorter than us. After, and after, after Dash Wilder taps him like. That's fine. But they still, afterwards, afterwards, who was standing yeah. tall? Dash Wilder immediately got up, started yeah. stomping him along with Scott Dawson. I see a good tag team match with him. You know, I mean, we've seen, we've seen a million of those. Like, oh, and they're great. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Otis versus Drew Gulak. My only thing about that is that I really like Otis these days. I actually kind of want Otis to go solo. Uh, and then I love Drew Gulak. And yeah. Drew Gulak actually, he's he's funny even when he's in the ring. He's so clever. Yeah, no. He tried to roll up Otis and he just stood there. That was great. That was really and funny. Picked him up. Uh, the Braun stuff was kind of whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, I guess we can just go through this real yeah, quick. Yeah. So start off with uh, Daniel Bryan backstage getting uh, his hands, wrist taped up. Miz walks up. Good old DB. He's got a great red velvet blazer looking like a million dollars. He says, uh, or Dana Bryan's like, what do you want? And Miz says, I know I had my opportunity to face the Fiend. You won. Good on you. But uh, I need to avenge the the Fiend for what he did to my family, violating the sanctity of my home. Mm -hmm. Um, But again, you won. So wish you well in your your, uh, endeavors against the Fiend. Beat him, not just for you. But for all of us, mm-hmm. uh, we go out to the ring for our first match: uh, Sasha and Bailey versus Lacey and Dana Brooke versus Alexa Cross, Alexa Cross, Alexa Bliss, and Nikki Cross. Uh, first, we get a, a, a Bailey promo. Uh, she said, "Hey, you people in the crowd, you're not going to follow through on any of your New Year's resolutions." Hey, can we celebrate something really quick? Huh? No Baron Corbin to open the he show. He didn't talk tonight. at all. He didn't have one word. 
Not a word, and it was great. Well, we saw some dog food for a second, but he didn't I talk. Can't wait till that at all. Thing's done. Me too. Um, he said, but she said, but in uh, 2019, herself and Sasha, they took some time to reflect, uh-huh. uh, and now uh, they're on top. Yeah, they're man. the best. Oh yeah. Lacey comes out and interrupts Bailey as she's about to say something else, and she she says, "I'm tired of you and uh, and Sasha." Using my daughter to get to me. Stop using my daughter. Because you have gotten to me. Yeah. Yeah. Way to say, hey, stop exploiting my weakness because you've been exploiting my weakness. <laughs> hey, it's working. Yeah. Stop. Please stop doing like, that. Like, why would you say that? Well, she's saying, hey, you crossed the line. It's it. You're, 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 you're living rent free in my, my head. head. I got to get it out of you. You're about to be a victim. You're about to be a victim. But if I hear I'm doing that, I'm like, I'm doubling down at that point. Mm-hmm, yeah. You know, I don't know. Yeah. It seems like, Hey, your ploy well, is instead, working on me. Hey, instead, Sasha got a couple of broken ribs. No doubt. I watched the replay of that. And it, it, when I watched it again, it didn't look as bad as when I initially you think watched she, it. Cause it's funny. I missed it. I, I was like in the kitchen and I missed the actual senton. I just saw like the pin, and I was like, "Oh man, cool, Dana Brooke." And then I saw my Twitter timeline. Oh my God, Sasha's ribs! I went back and watched it. It looks pretty bad. It looks. It, well, I looked. Do you think she she didn't overshot? She undershot, but a little too. Well, it looked like because I don't think her upper body hit Sasha at all. <clears throat> it was mostly yeah, right. her, her lower back and rear end yeah. and her legs. Okay, it almost kind of looked like her 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 rear end may hit on the side of Sasha's ribs. Yeah. And then look like mostly her her bottom of her thighs got most of Sasha. I really hope we're gonna get Sasha with some FBOS tape on her. That'd be great. DDP next week, they have this. It's her versus Lacey next week. Perfect. They now. So, anyways, uh, Alexa and Nikki come out, and and Alexa's like, "Why are you even in this match to begin with?" And Nikki says, "Well, if you want to get back in the tag title picture, uh, we got to win this." And Alexa's like, "You got that right, friend." I wonder. I wonder. So Alexa apparently was under the weather. She uh, tweeted out uh, something like a. Uh, Mucinex, cough drops, SmackDown Live. Uh, and she seems, she, like, that promo had, like, zero energy to oh, it. Oh, I know. And it's funny because it was even reflected in the dialogue. Why are we even out here right now? Why are we not here? I want to be in, that, uh, in bed napping. Exactly. <laughs> like Steve today. You don't have to mention that again. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. Uh, Anyways. 24-hour uh, yeah. day for old Larson. Heck, yeah, man. Anyways, Dana uh, Dana Brooke got a swanton for the win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> moving on. Well, I mean, Lacey Evans hit a hit a woman's yeah. right when Dana tagged herself in before that swanton got the win for her. All team. that matters, we didn't get a Batista bomb, so I was kind of upset. Yeah, about let that. Her win, let let Dana get that win with the Batista bomb. But what a great pin! That what a great win that is for her. That's awesome. It's it's cool. Like I'm personally happy for Dana. They're not going to do anything with it. They're not going to do anything with it. Well, the, okay, listen. A couple months ago, when she was on main event. I could have said, "Hey, it's cool. She's in the main event. A uh, uh, main event." You would have said, "Well, I'm not going to do anything with it." Well, here she is on SmackDown. Is she going to get the championship? No, but she's on TV, she, and and they keep on calling her the 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 improved Dana yeah. Brooke. I like Dana Brooke a lot. By all indications, she's been working her 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 butt off, getting better and improving. I think that's fantastic. I want her to succeed. Yeah, I'm happy she got this. Pin. She I mean, she's on TV. I just don't have faith in WB taking this win. What motivation she might get from that in doing anything from it? This is not. It's not in any way a reflection on Dana Brooke. It's a reflection on my faith in WB Creative, which yeah. is basically zero. I appreciate the moment, man. It was a good pin. She pinned Sasha Banks. It was a big deal. If that's the end of her career, I think she'd be happy. How many people get to say they pinned Sasha Banks on TV? It's a pretty big deal. That's all I'm saying. The list is probably longer than you think. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, next, Otis, Mandy, Dolph <laughs> recap from last week. They just replayed the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I know I want to watch Wrestle Kingdom too, man, but we have to get through this. I'm not trying to rush through anything. Um, and then Otis is backstage. He's uh, he's uh, getting warmed up for his match by curling a keg. Uh, yeah, that was cool. And then Mandy walks in. She's like, hey, how's it going? Uh, you know, how was your New Year's? She tried to talk to him. Be cool. Be nice. Yeah. And then Otis is like, uh, oh, why don't you ask Dolph about that? Yeah. And she's like, oh, you saw that? And he's like, yeah. You, no, he said, no, I didn't. But my, my mom, mom did. did. Sorry, my mom did. So she's angry. Now Otis is angry for her, essentially. Yeah. And then uh, Tucky comes in, says, Otis, it's about time for your match. Even the match didn't happen for another hour. Yeah. He's like, you got to focus. Well, I mean, that's sort of the point. It's like, you know. You got to go in, our, in the locker room and meditate. Well, I think, it, I think it's more like, hey, Mandy, this is my homie. Ride or die. Not Snake. Ride or die. He goes over there and he's like, 
He he's like, he just wanted to give it the stink eye. It didn't matter that his match was an hour away. He might not have had a match. He was still like, hey, I'm going to get him out of this situation. She knows. Maybe, he, maybe, she doesn't get a chance maybe, to talk to maybe him. Maybe Otis is in a situation where he, he and Mandy are, are patching things up and working things out, and he's stepping in and getting in the middle a of it. A true ride or die will know. Will know I that that's Tucky's, unpatchable. Tucky eats all the pins. He's not true ride or die, man. <laughs> doesn't that make him true ride no, or die? No, because he, when Otis goes solo and gets some success, Tucky's... Mm, he might go back to NXT. Oh, I know. I think you're right about that. There's a great video on uh, on the internet, on uh, Twitter, with Malcolm Bivens and Norman Smiley. Oh, yeah? It was hilarious. You got to watch it when we're done with it. I'll watch it. Uh, next, Miz is backstage. Uh, the New Day is there. Uh, they ask Miz, hey, how'd you celebrate uh, New Year's? And Miz is like, mm, grumble, grumble. <laughs> what and, and Big, e, Big E say? Big E says, uh, oh, I, I, I stayed home and watched the balls drop. I watched the balls drop. And Kofi said, there's only one ball drop. What did you watch? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Kofi starts talking about the Miz and congratulating him on, on a great decade, all of his accolades, all of his achievements, all his championship wins. Uh, he had the most in the decade. Of course, though, he was tied with Kofi for that honor. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Big E brings that up. And Kofi says, hey, let's pound it uh, for winning more titles. And Miz is like, uh-uh. No two goods. He says, I don't care about titles. Uh, essentially, he wants revenge on The Fiend. And he, he slaps the pancake tray out of Kofi's hand. And uh, Big E, he's very upset by this. He steps up. Yeah. He wants a piece of The Miz. However, Kofi says, you know, I'll accept the challenge. Yeah. I want to take on The Miz. Look at that, dude. You're always crowing about no long-term storytelling. Long-term storytelling. They got the. They both got the, the record for most whatevers. So that's good long-term storytelling right Completely there. Completely incidental, all planned. I'm sure. <laughs> Nothing dance. planned. Oh, by the way, uh, if you uh, enjoy going in raw, now is a great time to look at your phone or your desktop. Hit that like button. Oh. Hit the like button. I think that'd be a great idea. Right now, hit that like button. Also, at friendomarket.com. This episode is, before we continue, here's a word from a sponsor today's show, friendomarket.com. It's Got some, a couple more of those uh, Friendo Club shirts. By the uh, time this video goes up, they could be sold out. Went up, so those are probably sold out by now. But also, we're on a blowout sale. Yeah, all the other shirts are super cheap. 20, Shirt 20 sticker bucks. packs. 20 bucks. Super duper cheap. $20. And there's even one of them that's $15. Yeah, man. Go check it out. Yes. Limited sizes available. Yes. Uh, and thanks to friendomarket.com for us. sponsoring. Thank you, us, for sponsoring us. Going in raw. Say. Next, Elias comes out and sings a song I could have done without this entirely. Uh, he just goes out, out there, talks some trash about some heels, and then says... Hey, I'll win the Rumble and provide some hope for everybody. Yeah, I knew that's not going to happen. No. That is not going to happen. Where do you think he let – do you think the betting odds reflect everybody in the Rumble? Do they do that? No. Or it's just like the top 10 people. Well, I mean, as it gets closer, yeah. That, I mean, you go all the way down and be someone's everybody? like minus 10,000. Yeah. yeah. Which basically is 2% posh chance of winning. Right, exactly. And Elias will be above that, but not much more. Oh, yeah, he'll be in that area. He'll be like minus 1,000, minus 5,000. Yeah. Or Anyways. sorry, no, plus. Minus is usually. It's plus, yeah. yeah minus plus, is like you're super winning. Yeah, minus 10,000. Uh, and then it's basically a shoe-in. No, that is a shoe-in. I don't is... think I've ever seen minus 10,000. <laughs> uh, the Revival backstage, uh, they, talk, they were talking about that miracle on 34th Street fight. They're like, we're not clowns. We're, we shouldn't be in these gimmicky type matches. Uh, Dawson says, my back's all messed up for getting tossed into a Christmas tree. Yeah. He didn't mention much about the Legos, though. That would be the worst thing. Yeah, uh, and then Shorty G comes in, and it's just honestly the most irritating thing I've ever heard in my it's life. It's like it's it's hey like guys, every inspirational quote you can imagine. Like, there's nothing worse than a gimmick that's just like Tony Robbins but short. At least Tony Robbins was like in an Adam Sandler movie, and he's like kind of funny. I think it was an Adam Sandler. Movie. Yeah, he was. Anyways, so he comes up. He's like, I've got a new logo, or I've got a new slogan. It's rise above size. God, get out of here! Now you make me hate short people. Wow. With that kind of talk. Well, he, he goes to him and says, hey, stop listening to the noise and embrace who you are. And But that's like their whole thing. They want to show go out there and show who they are. Yeah. They They've are, already embraced who they, they are. They are doing that. So I don't, I mean, you're, I don't understand Maybe the point of his advice. Maybe like, you guys are clowns. Embrace. That would have been great if he said, you guys are clowns. No, here's the thing. You're a comedy act. Embrace it. <laughs> yeah, that's what it should be. You're a comedy act. And then they, they said, oh, look who's here. The New Year's baby. Yeah. Short jokes ensue, uh, and then more inspirational stuff from Shorty G. And Dash Flyer says, all right, let's just have a... He's like, ha, ha, you're, ha, you're gonna have a cha- You're going to have a match against one of us. 
I mean, Shorty G is essentially just a pushover, but he's a really good wrestler. He is a really good wrestler. Anyway, so Shorty G says, I want to have a match against you, Dash. Yeah, they had a match. Next. Dawson was on commentary. Uh, match happened. There was a bunch of cool stuff that happened. And, and then, then uh, yeah, made, ankle lock, Dash taps. Like, tap out. Yeah. And like quick. Like as soon as uh, Gable got his feet under him for the ankle lock, Dash was tapping. That's the ankle lock. Ain't no man. That's not a joke, man. You know? That kind of seems like the easiest submission move to get out of. This is a throwaway. What? It really does. What are you talking about, man? I feel like if you just really yank your, your leg towards you really hard, you can get out of it. I feel like that's like half the submissions. Though. Like the cripple or crossface? Everything. No, but you got like your head and, and limb on, uh, that someone else is controlling. This is your foot All someone you else is controlling. Is like put in there. I understand that this is like a real thing that people use, but usually they... I'm pretty use... sure I've seen in MMA. Yeah, yeah, it is. I know it yeah. is. Yeah. But it usually it, it involves, I, I think, like a great vining of the leg, too. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. That way they have control of the whole leg. Yeah. But if someone just grabs your foot, I feel like like your leg's strong, you're stronger than someone's arm. Oof. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Last time I checked, you were not a Muay Thai fighter. I'm not. <laughs> Confirmed. That's kickboxing, though, Steve. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know any of that stuff. A Gracie... Gracie, oh, Hoist Gracie, Hoist Gracie fighter. I have not sat under the learning tree of Hoist <laughs> Gracie. No, <laughs> that would be endlessly you know. fascinating because that dude was owning everybody early days of UFC. And he was the smallest dude out there. We should do some going around views of early UFC when people's faces are great. It never off. happened, but that'd be great. It'd be awesome. Guy just want to see that stuff when he would just like crawl all over big and he'd giant win. guys. Win. <laughs> yeah, he'd destroy him. Of course he would. The worst thing I ever saw was Tank Abbott uh, punch a guy so hard he had a seizure. Oh, that's the worst. It's the worst thing because he, his, stiff. His his he got stiff. got uh, so next we had uh, Kofi Kingston versus The Miz. Uh, the early part of this match was pretty fun because Kofi had the advantage, and every time, like he send Miz out of the ring or whatever, he just kind of laugh. Yeah, just to frustrate The Miz. He wanted The Miz to have a good time. Yeah, dude, who doesn't? And The Miz was having none of it. Yeah, he's got PTSD from dealing he wanted with to that. stew the and be angry and just want vengeance. It's a terrible working environment when the monster guy is showing up at your kid's freaking crib. That's horrible. Well, I mean, I mean, the the problem with the the fiend is that he he needs to work on his boundaries. <laughs> yeah. Keep work at work, right? Exactly. When you're not at work, you don't go to someone's house. Don't go to somebody's house to and advance an angle. You keep put it at work. Freaking dolls in their cribs, weirdo. That's yeah, weird. Uh, so, anyways, uh, Miz avoids. Tr- this is actually a really fun match. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, Miz is actually he's been putting on some good matches of late. Uh, SOS. Miz uh, avoids triple paradise. Hits some yes kicks in the corner. A couple of running knees. Uh, Kofi avoids the last one. Kicks him. Goes to the top, axe handle, boom drop, uh, sets up for trouble in paradise. Uh, Miz avoids that. Kofi tries for an SOS. Miz avoids that. Goes for his own skull crushing finale. Uh, Kofi instead rolls him up, gets the win, and then uh, Miz his 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 anger boils over at the conclusion of this match. Yeah. He goes after Kofi. Uh, Big E gets in the ring, chases him off. He's up on the ramp. Fans are chanting, "You suck, you suck," and he starts yelling at them. I gave you everything. I gave you everything. Yeah, the fans turned pretty quickly on the Miz, uh, because I mean he's the Miz. He was like his whole life. He's a heel. He was a bad guy, and they put him in there with like the most beloved guys ever, the New Day. Mm-hmm. Um, so they turned on him, but it was great. His performance was awesome. Yeah, it was, it was really he was good. Like I gave you everything. You guys are doing this to me. So he's falling apart. He's a mess. totally complete so, utter mess. Thank goodness John great. Morrison is there to. To, to, to help him out and give him some uh, give him a shoulder to cry on. After that, good old DB. Uh, this is like the Roman most Reigns awkward, had the an most interview. awkward interview I've seen in a long time. But I think it was purposely so, at least from Daniel Bryan's uh, perspective. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Like, yeah, you're probably right about that. Could two faces have like le- less chemistry? But I think you're right. I think it, he said good old, D- not good old DB. I, I don't change. I don't change. I'm still the same. And Roman Reigns comes in. And he's like, oh, so you're saying you're going to beat the Fiend at uh, Royal Rumble, get the Universal Championship? He's like, that's right. He's like, well, I'm going to win the Rumble, and then we'll have that match at WrestleMania. Yeah. Well, I mean, but yeah, yeah. But before all that, Daniel Bryan's like, every, we've seen every, every person that's faced the Fiend, they're mentally broken. That's when he said, not good old DB. Yeah. I'm not. I never change. Yeah. Um, and then Bryan gets in Reigns' step up to him a little bit and says, are you trying to fire me up? Mm-hmm. And Reigns is like, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> and he's like, well, I'm going to be double fired up for WrestleMania when it's for the Universal title. Yeah. It's such a facade. Uh, and then after that, we're supposed to get an interview with The Miz at his locker room. Instead, that's when John Morrison uh, exits the locker room. Hey, what's going on? Going to console his old, old friend. Here's my friend. And tells Kathy Kelly, 
Miz doesn't have anything left to say tonight. Ty is in here too, but she can't be on camera. <laughs> He's up in the door. <laughs> Did that slow mo. Uh, a quick shot to Braun. Walk. Oh, sorry, I skipped the Otis versus Drew Gulak match. Uh, Otis beat Drew Gulak. Um, <laughs> and while he came, we got a PowerPoint presentation <laughs> with like some. You know, cartoon pictures of Otis and Mandy was like, you know, ten, five reasons or whatever. Oh, it was like 375 okay, reasons. Okay, yeah, yeah, why Otis will never be with Mandy. And this promo was good. He's like, <laughs> He's hey. He's like, you look kind of like Tucky up there. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. <laughs> but he said, you know, not only like the foremost uh, technical uh, uh, wrestler in this company, I'm also a bit of a love doctor. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you this, there's no way Mandy would ever date a guy like you. Yeah. You look like you're leaking butter. <laughs> That's a great line. It is good. He says, PowerPoint <laughs> presentation. Uh, Mandy and Sonya are walking, watching backstage. Uh, I couldn't hear exactly what Dolph was saying, but I thought commentary said that he was apologizing. Oh, okay. Because um, he's talking to Mandy. Oh, you know what I loved about the, when John Morrison showed up? is that Corey Graves then said, there's been some rumblings that he might re-sign with WWE. Is backstage not canon? WWE announced it. <laughs> They announced it, Corey. There's been some rumblings that he's back with yes, WWE. a press release, Corey. From your own company. Oh, my God. You are the official podcast of the WWE. And you're talking about rumblings. <laughs> Ryan Satin announced it on Backstage. On your show. On WWE's show. Oh, my gosh. Anyways. That was funny. Uh, Otis won with a Vader bomb. Uh, next, Braun, he's just walking backstage. He has a match with Cesaro. That's next. Yes. Cesaro's got trunks again. He's not wearing Woo! his... Yep. I like the casual gear. No. Separate him from everybody else. You're the only one. Even he loved how much people hated it. He knew it was awful, man. That's why he liked it. I liked it because it was different. It wasn't oh, what everybody else was so wearing. So bad. He's out there in his 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 his, his, uh, his CrossFit shoes. He looks great. He's got that new like logo that looks like it was designed by a PR firm. Oh, I, I think that looks great. Well, yeah, it looks like it's designed by a PR firm. I think the font's good. Looks like a charity logo. It's like it's like a, it's an action logo. I feel like it's moving. Cesaro, the Cesaro Fund, helping people be people. Yeah, something like that. All right. I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah. What happened with this match? Uh, was Braun all, everybody was fighting Braun. Like everybody was just all getting in this match. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the numbers thing. And then Braun got uh, Cesaro with the power slam. Yeah, but then as soon as the bell rings, uh, Kinshasa Nakamura comes in him with Kinshasa after the bell. Yeah. But uh, there was some fun stuff with Sammy. He was hiding in the ring for a little bit at one point. Yeah, it's always fun. People hide under the ring. Uh, and then we had the main event. No, you're the one that's like... <laughs> Roman and Daniel Bryan. No, I wasn't talking about your pace. I was talking about you seemed grumpy. No, I'm fine. You seemed grumpy. You do actually kind of seem grumpy. Fine. You seem grumpy with SmackDown. That's why I was talking about Wrestle Kingdom, because I think that you're really... Well, you no, can no, say no, no all you want. No, I know you better than that. Apparently not. You have no desire to, to be doing this. No, Smackdown I totally do. I, I could sit here and talk about the Daniel Bryan and the Miz stuff for an hour if you want. Really? Yeah, if you want to. Okay, let's do it. Well, then we're going to miss the beginning. At of, it. We're going to miss the beginning of Wrestle Kingdom. We so just can't do it. you're lying to me. No, I'm not. I could, but we can't because there's time constraints. Oh, okay. Sorry. You're the one that seems grumpy now. I'm not grumpy. I'm having a great time. Uh, so this main event, Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan, good old DB versus yeah. Dolph Ziggler and Baron Corbin. Like you said, Baron Corbin, thankfully, did not talk Thank at all. Thank God. This. So we can both agree that that's now, great. Now, Baron Corbin had talked, then I had reason to be grumpy. You and me both, pal. Uh, so uh, right as the bell's ringing, Baron's like, hey, I'm going to sneak attack Roman. Guess what? Doesn't work. Big dog. It's his yard. Uh, he gets the advantage uh, till Dolph's ringside. He keeps distracting him. And then uh, Baron uh, gets the advantage for the heels. He tags in Dolph. Uh, he takes it to Reigns uh, till Roman drops him with a huge boot. Brian's in. Uh, Brian instantly has the advantage. And then you hear Bray start laughing. Oh, my God. Wait a second. Did we even mention after the I'm sorry. I probably zoomed ahead on that one. What? The Seamus return. Oops. <laughs> after Shorty G. Uh, so he was getting beat up by the, the revival. revival. Seamus runs out. Seamus yeah. runs out. They scurry off. But he waits until Shorty G gets up. Brogue a kick. And uh, they, keep, they keep on saying the fella is back. Yeah. So he just looked like he did in 2010. The exact same. So it's literally just Drew McIntyre, but for SmackDown. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. And then a he less said, interesting Drew McIntyre for SmackDown. He either Instagrammed or tweeted something about like some men just come up short or something like that. So he's going to have. So actually, the thumbs wrong. It should be four returns. A thing with. Uh, well, I said three acts. Oh, all right. Um, and so, uh, yeah, uh, he's going to be feuding with. 
Shorty G to get that Apparently. out of the way. Um, and then he'll just tread water. He's not as cool as Drew is, though, but SmackDown's no. not as cool as Raw, so there you go. He's like a poor man's Drew McIntyre. Um, so, yeah, that will happen. Yes, happy you mentioned that. We go to commercial when Bray's laughing. We come back. Roman has the advantage until Baron hits him with a deep six that earns him a two count, tosses Roman to the ring steps. And Roman is isolated to, for, like, quite a while. Yeah. Um, until he Superman punches Baron. He gets the hot tag to Daniel Bryan. Baron does the same to Dolph. Brian's in. Yes kicks. Uh, Dolph avoids the last one. He tries to roll up. Daniel counters with the yes lock. Baron's in to break it up. He goes for a choke slam on Daniel Bryan. Rain spears him, though. But then Dolph super kicks Roman. And then Brian hits a knee plus on Dolph. Lights go down. Fiend teleports. He's ringside now. Uh, Daniel Bryan's like, all right, I'm taking it Let's to you. Let's do this. Suicide dive to him. Uh, goes for a running knee off the apron. Fiend catches him with a mandible claw. Then right in the feed hole. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was actually a really well done. Spot. And then he and he takes Daniel Bryan, drives him through the barricade by the timekeeper area, mm-hmm. uh, all while holding on the mandible claw. Uh, eventually, you get the flickering lights. Fiend disappears. Roman goes to check on Daniel Bryan. Uh, Dolphin Baron lay him out. Toss him in the ring. Get more handcuffs. More dog food. Handcuff him to the bottom rope. Usos come out. Yeah, they're back. That was rad. It's awesome. Great. Make the save. Super kicks. Couple leaps over the top rope. Uh, they stand tall with Roman to end the show. I think that's fantastic. It is fantastic. I'm hoping that means, I mean, given they're all, you know, related for marriage, Naomi's going to come back maybe maybe at the Rumble, I guess. I hope so. Yeah, that'd be good because I really like her. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of good returns. It felt like an episode of SmackDown that actually did kind of mean something, even though they still managed to shoehorn a bunch of stuff that kind of didn't feel like it meant much. But, I mean, these are the stories that we have. The Otis yeah, thing was part of a story. The the I Gable know. thing and the Revival thing was part it's of a story. It's all part of a story, I know. It's just their, their, their roster is just not my favorite roster. I think that's the thing with me is that it's just, eh. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't disagree. It's also, it's. Uh, I also get this, and this is what happens to me with Raw sometimes too, is that SmackDown has been on a roll lately of really bad episodes, of just boring episodes. Yeah. And so I think it's going to be that going into it. I was actually pleasantly surprised tonight when it started off with that uh, women's uh, uh, oh, the, 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 three the corner, triple threat. Yeah. yeah. Triple threat tag match, yeah. I, I was like, oh, man, what a welcome surprise. In my head, I'm still like, yeah, but stack, SmackDown's still going to sink because it, just, it, it has – it's hard to it's hard to clean slate it every single week. You I can't know. do that. I know you can't. Um, and so I think it was actually a pretty decent smack. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It was it just there's a couple segments that it's like all right, well. And I still think it has a B level roster to be honest with you. I really do. Like Otis is in a major storyline. I know they really got the short end when they they lost Lesnar. Mm-hmm. I mean yeah. Alexa and Nikki are great. I love them. Um, I think they're really good. Um, but in terms of the star power of the show. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, let's answer some questions. Thera Thabata says, Power Rank, the best way is to get out of being drafted for World War Three. Oh, boy. There's a lot of crazy stuff happening in the world right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully it doesn't get worse than what it is. Hopefully it doesn't escalate. I feel like it will. Unfortunately, I, I, I think you're right. Um, I actually looked at I was watching like some World War Two stuff like not that long ago. Yeah. And uh, I was looking at uh, the numbers for people that got drafted back in World War Two in Vietnam. And... Uh, yeah, like the odds of you actually get it. it was, the people made it out. Like when you watch war movies. You like make everybody, it everybody between 18 and 49. But it's kind of not that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but to get out of it, you know, move to Canada. Just be a straight up draft dodger. Because not that many people, like a ton of people actually did dodge the draft. Not a lot of people actually faced real consequences for that. Uh, like cut off a, one of your fingers or toes. That is extreme. That is, man, that's forever. If you want to stay home. You don't want to go to Canada or whatever. Just dodge. Just go to, yeah, we'll just go to Canada. I'd rather go to Canada for a nice little vacation. I mean, if you can't afford it, then I guess, you know. Boy, that would suck, though. Because he'd be, he'd be gone for until the war ends. How would you get that done? What? Cutting off a appendage. I drink a lot. Okay. To numb it. So and the I, Civil War style is what you're and saying. And then I get something really, like, really sharp and really hot yeah. and just do it. Because you do it and it would cauterize the wound. What would you use? Because when you say just do it, that's a that's pretty heavy, dude. I understand that. Would you be using an electric Another saw? Another reason not to get drunk. Would you use an electric saw? No, that's too messy. If you get drunk, you might you might lose a couple more than like a finger. You know, I'll probably do a toe. I'll do a pinky toe. You might lose like half your foot if you're drunk. Though. Nah. <laughs> if you're so drunk that it's going to take you. <laughs> your aim even even. Yeah, man. Oh my god. 
kind of feel like that's not true, but we'll talk about that when you get drafted. I'm too old to be drafted. <laughs> At the so age the of 43. I'm in the clear. <laughs> yeah, you're I'm too old. Both. Uh, Lord Ziffer, what is Dana Brooks' current ceiling? Could she realistically be championed by SummerSlam of this year? I would love to see all the hard work she's put in be rewarded. It is being rewarded, man. She was on, against she's Sasha on Banks. SmackDown tonight. Two weeks in a row, she's mixing it up with the horsewoman and Lacey Evans, like one of the biggest people they've been pushing. This is a pretty decent deal for her. But if, if the question is, could she realistically be no! championed by SummerSlam? There? No. No. There's no. like a... 13 people on SmackDown alone that's in front of her in the no, line. But she still, she got the pin on, on Sasha Banks. Stevie Bradley, Power Rank, drinks to help us stay awake for Wrestle Kingdom. He says, because I sure as hell needed some for SmackDown tonight. I, You know, honestly, I'm not sure if I'll need it, but I, I enjoy drinking coffee. Um, I brought some tea. So I'll have, I'll have a little bit. I brought some vitamin waters, too. I'm not really sure it's going to help me stay up. A little sugar in it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, coffee. I'm not an energy drink guy. I come and go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we got those Red Bull sent us like a massive amount. And I drank all the sugar-free ones. <laughs> I drank them all. Very quickly, too. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jake Mountford, what do you guys see WWE doing with Sheamus? Maybe like McIntyre. Yeah, not maybe like Mac. It's going to be McIntyre 2.0. He says as mercenary. So is, is, is Sheamus. He's not going to be a gun for he's hire. He's going to be Baron's henchman in two months' time. Did you see one of the Netflix movies that they announced? Is a Spencer for Hire movie. Oh, wow. But that's with Mark cool. Wahlberg. That's interesting. And uh, what's his name? Winston Duke. Oh, yeah. As uh, Hawk, hmm. the Avery Brooks character. Interesting, interesting. That sounds great. He's also a Fincher flick about... Uh, it's called Mank. Yeah, I heard about that one. The Writing of Citizen Kane. That's that cool. looks cool, man. That'd be cool. They announced like a huge slate of films. Uh, Wolfpack for Life. Cultaholic had a video in which Ross said that wrestling used to be character focused instead of work rate. Now it's work rate focused instead of characters. Should they go back to being more focused on characters or more on work rate? Um, he's uh, Wolfpack says, for example, Ricochet, Humberto, Apollo Crew, Cedric Alexander, good workers, but no character. I disagree that that good that those those characters those workers i mean it depends on what you mean by like character i mean i guess like steve austin is sort of a, is a character well and there's also a difference between character and gimmick that's true as well yeah um because like ricochet his character he's just a good dude like he's i don't got, see but they, but he's like you know a real life superhero that's his gimmick steve austin as a character i don't think is that different than, than Kevin Owens as a character. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't think that there's that much of a difference. I think that if you were to ask Vince McMahon, he would probably refute that. He would probably say it's all about character and story, which is probably ironic. But yeah. I, I mean, I think that you can impress Vince by having a fantastic work rate. I really do. Uh, but it's funny because Vince has never been like, historically speaking, like a huge work rate guy. No, he hasn't. But then we hear stories of like, you know, people get pushed based on that. Like Andrade... Vince really liked what he saw in the ring, which could be a combination of work rate and character in the no, ring. That's what, yeah, 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 I think he could like in-ring performance, but not necessarily meant be specific about work rate. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, sure, yeah. Um, so, I mean, to the answer, to answer the question, I think, I, I don't know if I necessarily, and I'd have to watch the video to, to get the full context of what Ross said. And, uh, and I, I think that he's a terrifically intelligent guy. Yeah. Uh, but I think that, I mean, these days, so much emphasis. I mean, if you look at NXT, like literally what they're doing, I mean, they're putting on these great matches, these, mm -hmm. you know, high work rate matches. Um, and so, I mean, I, I kind of get that premise. I kind of understand. Oh, that. I do. Totally. You can't. Yeah. I mean, yeah. These days you're going to get a lot less people who are just like lumps in the ring. Yeah. But they're still getting these huge pushes based on their character. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with that. Totally. And, I, and I think the, 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 the most effective story is generally being told in, in wrestling or is not centered around. Oh, I'm a better worker than you. Right. There's still yeah. character based conflict yeah, that has yeah, to yeah. be, you know, at the heart of the story. Otherwise, you know, there's I've, there's been plenty of great matches on TV that uh, is hard it is it's hard to get in mo forge an emotional connection with if the story's not there. Mm -hmm, yeah. And I think the guys that I th my thing is I think the guys that stand out because all these names that he mentioned, they're all great workers. Mm -hmm. The guys that are on TV, though, like Apollo Crews, he's never been given an opportunity, really. They've never worked on developing his character. No. He's not on TV. Um, Cedric Alexander, they really didn't give him much of an opportunity. He's not on TV. Andrade is a magnificent character. Mm -hmm. He's just top of the level. He's on. He's the, he's the United States champion right now. 
Um, Ricochet, Ricochet's interesting because they have fleshed out his character a little bit, but I think that his work rate is so over the top. He is so magnetic and electrifying in yeah, the yeah, ring yeah, yeah. that they, they'll push him to the moon. You know, I don't think they'll push him to the moon. I think they'll keep him involved. Yeah, he's on TV. I mean, that's a good point. That's they'll good. Keep he, him he would involved. be further ahead if they're pushing yeah. to the moon. Yeah. Uh, just AJ. I've never been a huge fan of Seamus, really, but for some reason, I feel very happy he's back. I thought his last one run was great. His YouTube channel has made him much more likable, not to mention he looks like he, to be in amazing shape. What is his ceiling now? Ceiling should be, at best, mid-card champion, but he might get another title run. I would be shocked if he got a big title run. This is speculation on my part. Okay. Uh, and it's it's just gut feeling. He's going to beat The Fiend. No. <laughs> um, and granted, it depends. I don't know how bad his neck is because one of the reasons we heard, we heard that he was put with Cesaro was to prolong his career because he had spinal stenosis. Stenosis. Um, he was been undergoing treatment for it. Uh, maybe, again, speculation, gut feeling, maybe and I will probably be proven completely wrong on this. Uh, he's going to give it, you know, another two years solo, see what happens, uh, or until his they tell him he can't wrestle anymore, mm-hmm. essentially. Um, and maybe in the course of that, they'll find a story for him where he can be involved. Uh, people like him in the company, obviously, um, where he'll get another title run. Maybe another situation like he had against Roman where he's a guy that they know everybody will boo and uh, help get a face over by putting him in a program with him. Yeah, I think that I sort of see him as like a like they know that he's a good, reliable heel Mm -hmm. that people will boo Mm -hmm. and he's a big bully guy and they can use that to get other people over. But he they'll never have a problem making him look weak. Um, And I think that's a really valuable thing to have. And it's sort of where Drew McIntyre is. I know we both have big hopes for Drew, but Drew those should are, not be in that position. Those are dwindling very fast. Yeah, no. Um, and I don't want Drew to be in that position, but I just think that he is. I think that they really like big, reliable guys that can get other people over, and they don't look weak in the process. I mean, it's kind of what Samoa Joe is, also. Um, and it's like we want so much more for those guys, but it just doesn't seem to be in the cards. They have the role for them. But of the three names you mentioned, <clears throat> the one I feel like most likely another t- title run would be Sheamus. You think so? Yeah. That's interesting. Maybe all, this is also based off where he is on SmackDown. Because if he was on Raw, I wouldn't think that at all. Partially, but you know, it seems like people within the company like him. That's true as well. That always matters. Look he's at been Baron giving, Corbin. Been giving, every, been giving every opportunity for the, what, 10 years he's been in the company. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if they're like, all right, we know we can, we can, we can rely on Sheamus yeah. to do this, this, what we need him to do. And if that involves having a title run, I don't think they would uh, have any sort of uh, hesitancy to, to do it. Fair enough. Uh, Alex Foster says, I actually like Morrison's return, even if it was backstage. It was a cool story moment. What other wrestlers would be able to return backstage and have it be impactful? And hats off to Alex. He capitalized the I in impactful. Because he's Johnny Impact. Yeah, very clever. I like the return, too. Yeah. I do. I mean, it's funny. You can kind of joke about it and be like, oh, that's kind of underwhelming. But I really liked it. I don't feel. I mean, it's better than think of any other alternative. It's better than like any other alternative. Why I mean, does maybe what is, why does read the day but read read the butt need to be flashy? Why does it even have to be like oh here's a jobber and here's the return? I you know. know. Let's get him established that's, in the most boring out. way possible. I don't, want, I don't want to see. that. I like yeah. this man. He's immediately injected in a story that makes sense. Mm-hmm. He's helping the Miz. Mm-hmm. I like that. That's good stuff. Same. Hands would be wonderful if Miz turns heel. We riot. However. If Miz becomes a top heel in SmackDown and replaces Corbin, we have a celebration riot. Fantasy book your riot squad. Yeah, sorry, man. I think that nobody's going to replace Corbin as top heel. I think I think as much as they like Sheamus, they like Corbin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Corbin's kind of like the new Sheamus. He is. No, he totally is. Anyways, uh, we got to get ready for our Wrestle Kingdom stream. We do. Hopefully everybody will join us. Thanks Hope so, so much for watching. And until next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.